Hey y'all, this is A.L. Think Madam, and this is the recap review for Love and Marriage Huntsville. <sighs> so y'all know we got Love and Marriage Huntsville and we have the newest spinoff to the Love and Marriage, you know, situation, which is Love and Marriage DC. Mm -hmm. I'll be back with that after this, y'all. So don't worry, I'll be back looking crazy. Anyway, if you hung in here after my other recap review, I appreciate it. So let's go ahead and get into this one, child. Um, this episode started where I left off, where Stormy and Destiny were arguing, got up, got into each other's faces. A chair was about to be thrown. Like, Destiny took the shoes off. It's a mess. It then got to the point where they're trying to, everybody is trying to calm everybody down. Um, Melody and Tiffany, I guess you could say, were trying to calm Stormy, Stormy down while Kimmy. And Letitia were trying to calm Destiny down. Like, they had to take Destiny into a whole nother part of where the Galentine's events were happening so that they could calm her down because it was a cussing match, fussing match, about to be throws, bows thrown, all of that. It was a lot going on, right? Well, it was interesting to me that after Melody was telling Stormy that she needed to calm down because they ain't got no real beef like that, like, there's no reason, why don't you just like calm down because y'all ain't got no beef she went and checked on destiny and i was like oh <laughs> wow that's interesting and like she basically went in there and told her the same thing which is that you know they all ain't got no beef but destiny's point was like girl i was not even talking to stormy and she keeps interjecting she keeps y'all she's just doing the most wasn't nobody talking to her now to stormy's point i understand that Destiny was indeed mocking her accent because every time I hear her talk, whenever she's not in her confessionals, she be sounding like tiny or something to me. She be sounding like tiny. Um, and I was like, God, look at her accent real strong. And it is, but that's not a reason to like mock her. Like she really was mocking her in that moment. It is what it is. But at the same time, I'm just like, nobody was talking to you. She really keeps putting herself into these situations and she is a mess starter. Things will have been resolved or so people think. And then all of a sudden she comes from out of nowhere. And it's like, ma'am, where did you come from? Why are you here? So anyway, it's just, it's just a foolishness child. So I don't know if Destiny left or not. But before she did, if she left, she and Kimmy were one-on-one -on -one and talking. And she was like, look, you're not going to get out of here unless you go through me. And so Kimmy told her, you know, <laughs> I'm a lot like you because she was like, okay, so if this situation happened to you, what would you have done? And she straight up told Destiny, I probably would have thrown a chair, but this isn't my situation. So what I'm going to do is play mediator because that's not the side of the table that I'm on. And I'm like, girl, <laughs> it's a mess. It's a whole mess. Because like I said, I just don't understand why Stormy got to be everywhere. It's a mess. And you could tell that Destiny was getting really, really upset and, you know, she was on the verge of tears. Her eyes started, like, getting red. Like, you could tell that a person is holding back tears. Like, it was a lot. So, I was like, child, can y'all stop? So, then we saw Melody and um, Letitia go back into the conversation again. And she was basically saying what she said before, which was, you, Letitia, keep coming at me the same way you did when we were on the reunion. And I kept telling you, like, you need to stop interrupting me. Like, that's what you kept doing. And you did that in this instance as well. You kept interrupting me when I wasn't even talking to you. So the fact that they went at it and they didn't come to blows, even though they did stand up, it was still a lot less than what Destiny and Stormy was doing. So anyway, she was just like, look, I don't understand. Because then eventually it just got to a point where she was like, look, you mad at me about something I can't control. Your husband out here fighting and bopping. So Letitia said, oh, we knew ever since the first, ep the first season of this show came out that Martel was cheating on you. Y'all said don't talk about it. We said, okay, cool, whatever. And I was like, now I've heard that before, but I was like, I don't know. A lot of people be making up stuff just to, you know, get kick clicks and views. It'd be that deep for them. But yeah, so I didn't know if there was any truth to that or not. But 
Apparently, this was something that was known amongst the group for quite some time, like before this show really even came out like that. And they were asked not to say nothing about it. Then eventually it came to light on the show. And then it was like, now we're kind of forced to talk about it because it's happening. It is what it is. Well, Melody was talking about, you know, there's alleged information out there about your husband. So I don't understand. I, I, I don't understand why you sit up here trying to come for me when all of this stuff is out there on your husband. And I try to be a friend to you and tell you about it. But you're going to try to condemn me and come for me because of that. And you talking about you get over stuff. It's a lie. I, I ain't got time. It is what it is. And ain't nobody got time. And she was just like, look, I just got to the point where if I feel like I'm about to jump over a table, I don't need to have no, no dealings with it. So eventually she was like, look, I'm done. I ain't got time for it. So Stormy and Melody ended up leaving because nothing was resolved. Well, it's Kimmy's birthday and Maurice has cooked and prepared some things for her. Got nice roses and all this stuff for her. He's surprised her with breakfast in bed and talking and enjoying their moments together. And so she starts telling him about the Galentine situation and all of that. And then it got to a point where she was like, um, yeah, uh, Melody is invited. She hasn't said anything about whether or not she would be in attendance to my son's um housewarming or whatever and so he was like oh well if she doesn't come can martell come and so she was like mm, i have to think and pray on that because he got so much stuff going on he took it upon himself to be like well i'm gonna call him right now and see what's going on and so she was like why like you don't need to call him ended up facetiming him he trying to figure out what the drama is because he was like i'm staying far away from drama i don't know what you're talking about how am i gonna be in the middle of something when i don't even know what's going on so Ended up telling him that, you know, a lot of stuff is always going on and we've already been informed that y'all don't need to be around each other. There's always a lot of animosity going on. And if one of y'all is going to be there, we try to make sure that neither one of y'all are going to be in the same room at the same time. My son is having this situation. Um, if she's unable to attend, would you come? And so... My wife is saying that she isn't sure about it. And I just wanted to know, like, what's really going on. And so he was like, well, I don't understand, first of all, why you would extend an invitation to her and not me. And he kind of made it seem like it was like, why you say something to me first instead of going to her? But she was just like, I didn't even want this phone call to happen. But he wanted him to be able to talk to him and just hash it out right then and there. And I'm like, child, mm -mm, not on my birthday. You don't went woof. But anyway, talking to him. And he feels some type of way. And I'm just like, yeah. Um, I didn't like how he told Kimmy that he needed to let, she needed to let him talk. I, I ain't like that because she already told you she didn't want the phone call to even happen because she didn't want him around. And it, you already know why. All the implications, every time you look up, he's, he's in something on social media in the middle of some kind of storm because of his infidelity like all kinds of stuff coming on the side helper coming out of nowhere every time you look up like we don't need to see this so anyway moving right along um he has packed bags for them to go to miami that is a part of her birthday um situation for the day and so apparently he packed the stuff he parked the stuff um he part he packed i'm sorry I'm over here watching Wanda. He ended up packing stuff in the middle of the night. And so they are going to be able to go. Um, so then we end up seeing Marceau going over to Black. And he wants to meet up with Wanda. Well, he's supposed to meet up with her so that she can shadow him and people in, at the um, at his restaurant. Well, she just sat up here doing the most. And so she was like, well, I don't understand. I didn't think I had to dress no certain type of way. And... Like, she just had on, child, I don't even want to say what she had on. But anyway, she was not dressed to be in the kitchen. So, I don't understand why she had that on. It is what it is. So, after everything was all said and done, he told her that she going to have to get them nails, them hands dirty or whatever, and get to washing dishes. So, she was like, I'm not going to wash no dishes for you to give me the loan for my truck. And... I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Listen. I'm just gonna say it like this. Even though we all know the truth. We can see it with our own two eyes. 
I feel like Wanda is very much so aware that her daughter hit the gold mine when she got with her husband and all of the stuff that they've been able to acquire over the years together and solo, but he has a whole lot of fire irons in the fire. People request him. They want him to build stuff all the time. And if they were to get divorced, she's going to have a good little check for quite some time coming from him, not only from the businesses that they share, but just off the fact and the strength of the fact that that is his, those are his children. And they were together for 15 years. Just saying. So anyway, um, so she know where the money at. She know where the money reside. We, we just, that's just it. That just is what it is. The money reside over there and she's able to get a lot of stuff because of that. Like I'm just saying. So she was like, I'm not finna do that for no long. I'm not finna come up in here and put my hands in there. I just got my nails done. What I look like. I ain't finna do none of that for no long. So then for some reason she started going off to my some. We need to discuss something and ask him what was going on with a picture that's been circulating on the internet of him, allegedly a picture of him in bed at a hotel with uh, some some person. And so y'all know how he is, always never answering questions or whatever. And so he was like, yeah, I'm not answering nothing. I mean, my wife knows where I am. And the only thing he actually did say was that, yeah, I was in Atlanta on a certain day and I was with a friend. My wife knew exactly where I was. And I'm like, child, I, <laughs> I don't know if there's any truth to that, uh, but whatever, y'all know how he is. He's great at not answering questions. So it is what it is. And his wife accepts it because she wants to be dumb. So let her be dumb in peace, I guess. As long as the money is there, I guess, whatever. Do what you do. Just bring the money home. I will shop my blues away. <laughs> that's that's what it's giving to me and i mean i'm not trying to laugh at her it's just like it's sad anyway we end up seeing stormy and melody meet up melody told her that um she and destiny had a conversation after everything went down and you know it was just a lot that happened um she was just like look i just didn't like the fact that she kept setting up sitting up there mocking me she was making fun of my accent and all this other stuff. And she was like, you know, I did tell her that she was being aggressive that day. I told her that she was being very aggressive, whether that's what she felt that she was doing or not. And she was like, well, the energy was off off rip because when we walked in, Tisha didn't say nothing to nobody. She on her phone and it just started off wrong. I'm just like, Lord, come on. And then she basically went over the whole scenario again about how Destiny was taking her shoes off and all that. And she was like, at first I was trying to ignore her. And, you know, I kind of, you know, really tried to blow it off by saying, okay, girl, you want to be like me? That's cool. That's cute. But then she started mocking me. So, I mean, like I said, I kind of can understand it. But at the same time, I feel like she put her own self in that situation because then nobody asked her to jump into these folks' business. She stayed jumping into these people's business and then wonder why she in the middle of every argument for no reason. So anyway, we end up seeing Tisha and her mama link up. And she is talking to her and she was just like, look, I see what's going on here. She looks like she's at a food truck. And so she's talking to her. And she was like basically telling her everything that Marceau said. And she was like, I ain't watching no dishes. I ain't finna do none of that. I'm supposed to shadow you. I'm here to talk to you about the business side of things. I ain't here to do none of that. So then she started talking to her daughter about the uh, rumors. And so she was like, I know what's going on in my household and whatever. What I'm like, girl, you don't know what's going on in your household. You, you know what he tells you is going on. Because as I've said since the first season, he always came across as the main one. The main one out of the men that was out here fighting and bopping. So I'm like, what is we talking about? Now, Wanda be doing the most, but I was all the way here for her during this part when she was like, look. I don't play by my daughter. I feel like he playing you and I hope that you're not staying with him and just dealing with this because you really, really love him. I was like, Wanda, you better set it war. But she over here talking about y'all need to leave it alone. Everybody is just saying all this stuff. I know my husband. If I need to at any time, I know exactly what my husband is and I can roll up and he will be there. And I'm like, girl, that don't mean nothing because you could say he could tell you that he had black right now. And he could be behind the counter 
You could be on the other side of the counter talking to him, but somebody would be right up under there, slobbing on a knob like corn on the cob, and you wouldn't be none the wiser. You would be none the wiser because that's how dumb you want to be. But who am I? So anyway, uh, <clears throat> we end up seeing uh, the Whitlows meeting up with Martell at this wine place. And they're talking and they wanted to know like what all is going on. So many things have been happening. And he was like, look, of course I wanted to meet up at a place like this because I'm really into wine now and all of that. So they're talking and um, basically the gist of all of that was Melody seems to be in the middle of everything and that you need to be careful because you probably going to be on the chopping block next because every time you look up, somebody will be cool with her one day and they done fell out the next because everybody has been one by one being knocked out. It is what it is. Um, they wanted to know how he felt about the book signing that basically didn't happen because the kids weren't there. And he was talking about, he thinks that like, I think the, uh, older daughter, the oldest daughter, um, had, had, had certain feelings about it because it really was something they wanted to do. And that, you know, so she was like, well, she told me that she had her uncle's funeral to attend and that you didn't give enough notice and all this other stuff. And so they went to the funeral. And so he was like, well, you know, we really can't have contact with one another, but I, had I known in advance, every time he say something like that, I'm just like, sir, it was not your week. It was not even your week. So we got to stop saying this, sir. Like, you got to stop. You got to stop. <laughs> so anyway, he was just basically just telling her that she better watch her back. It is what it is. So anyway, uh, they over here trying to have another guy's weekend and all this other stuff. And I'm like, y'all love being in trouble, but go off. The end of the episode came and we ended up, they had this music. I can't wait a minute. Let me go to it. <laughs> Cause I was like, y'all knew y'all was wrong for this music selection. So I, was like, I woke up this morning and looked into your eyes. I'm like, what? I don't think I know you anymore. I'm like, what is this music doing? <laughs> what is going on? But they had her pull up. And she over here looking sad and and broken. And I'm like, girl, you've known this man has been cheating for years upon years, but you just wanted to believe in your mind that he wasn't. We normally know when these things are happening. I knew my ex was cheating on me day in and day out during the time. Anytime he was cheating, I always knew. And when it was when it never stopped, I knew. Because he would act completely different. So you know there is an intuition. We do have women's intuition, no matter how, how real other people want to believe it, it really is happening. So they over here, y'all know production want to sit up there and throw all kinds of flashbacks and stuff into the mix of moments where she's asked him flat out, do you have anything to talk to me about? Has anything happened? And when Melody has told her that stuff then popped off. And I'm like, child, anyway, so she ended up asking him to come outside. He was like, oh, hey, what's up, babe? And so... She was like, um, I need to talk to you. So he was like, okay, cool. What's up? And so she was like, I need you to get inside. And so he was like, oh, it's going to be a long conversation. So he didn't get in the car. The conversation going to start. And I guess we're going to see it next week. But anyway, hey, y'all. Bye, y'all. Have a good weekend. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed this recap review. Y'all, I'm trying to hurry up so I can uh, get my life together. And I think the, the weather is doing something weird. I don't know what it's even doing. But I'm trying not to be caught up in nothing. But anyway, um, I'll be back with the Love and Marriage um, DC recap review shortly. All right, y'all take care. I will see y'all later on. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. And let's talk about it down in the comment section.